everyone. Thank you so much for joining my talk. I am super excited to have you here. I was absolutely holy crap overwhelmed with how many people registered for this talk. So thank you so much for putting all that pressure on me to make sure this is awesome. <laughs> but I promise I will do my best. It will be awesome. Uh, we're going to go through a ton of content and hopefully you guys will have some amazing uh, insight from this and some resources at the end. So yeah, thank you Amar for putting this Maid Service Success Summit together and for making it so difficult to say all of that in one sentence. But I do appreciate that he has done this and has basically just brought all of the greatest minds in the industry together to be able to give you guys some awesome insight into every single area of your business for free because he's amazing. So big shout out to him. Everybody pat him on the back, shoot him over a message, just say thank you because this is such a cool thing that he's done. And I'm really excited that I got to be a part of it, that I got to be a part of the creation of it, just being a part of the Zen Maid team which is a good segue into who am I? For those of you that don't know who I am, I am Courtney Wisely and I am a lot of things. I wear a lot of hats. I have a lot of roles and I think I might have multiple personalities. I don't know. Ask my boyfriend. So one of my personalities is I am the CSO of Zenmade. What does that mean? I am the chief strategy officer and we're not even entirely sure what that means either, to be honest. I'm just kind of a jack of all trades. I help with strategy. I help with growth. Um, you know, ideas and I help with support sometimes and I help with, I do demos and I do all kinds of stuff. So I'm kind of just all over the place with Zenmade. Uh, that is where I started in this industry. So actually Zenmade was um, my first introduction into this industry and I absolutely fell in love with the Zenmade team and I fell in love with this specific industry. I mean, all of the people in our group and the Zenmade mastermind, everybody is just so freaking nice and everybody is just so helpful and so willing to help each other with advice and suggestions and everything. And I just knew this was like my kind of people because that's totally who I am as a person. I love helping people. So I, I felt like I found my niche. I found my peeps. And so uh, I got really involved. I learned everything I could about the cleaning industry. And then I decided, I woke up one day and I said, hey, Mark, I'm going to start a maid service. <laughs> he said, what? <laughs> and I said, yeah, I think I can do it. I said, I think I have learned pretty much everything there is to learn about how to do it, what not to do, you know, how to avoid the pitfalls and all of these types of things. And he was like, do it. And he's always been one to just, you know, motivate me to follow my dreams and everything, which I super appreciate. How many of you guys can say that about, you know, previous bosses that you've had? Like, I know I can't. So I'm just so, so blessed to be part of this team. So that, um, of course, led me to start Magic Maids which is my maid service. And it is called Magic Maids because I'm in love with Harry Potter. And I, of course, wanted to put a magical element in it. And by the way, the reason my talk is today, July 31st, is because today is Harry Potter's birthday. Woo -woo. So everybody shout out to the boy who lived. So thank you very much for that. And um, yeah, so I started Magic Maids and we just celebrated our two year anniversary, which is super exciting. And we just got a huge sign up on my building, which is awesome. And just watching it all grow and watching it all happen has just been incredible. It, it's truly just been such a joy. So with those two companies running uh, Magic Maids and then of course working for Zen Maid still, and I still do to this day, of course, I'll probably always work for Zen Maid because I love it so much. Um, I did discover that I started to become like known for being like the go-to ask her anything about technology and automation stuff girl, <laughs> which I never even intended to be, but I love helping people. Like I said, so I just always answered everybody's questions. And before I knew it, I was just kind of getting this reputation as that person. So I decided, you know what, I need to start a third company. Not that I started Zenmade, but I needed to start my second company which is Rescue My Maid Service. So we, I started that like uh, a year ago, a little over a year ago. And basically when I started it, I wasn't quite sure what I wanted it to be. I just knew that I, it needed to exist. So I created it and I didn't really talk about it much, but it was there so that whenever I could offer up solutions like website building and you know all the techie stuff that people always want help with, um, I had kind of a company to put that under. So that's kind of where it started. And then as we went along, I kind of realized that it's, it evolved into something even bigger. And then 
just recently it clicked and I realized what the big, huge thing is that it's going to be. So for those of you that have been following me in my group and you're here because you want to hear what the big epic announcement is, you'll have to wait because that'll be at the end of the talk. Ha ha ha. So yeah, but I did decide what this is going to be and it is very exciting. So it's never been done in our industry ever. I will be the first, the innovator, the millennial that's starting this. Yee! So you guys just stay tuned. You'll find out what it is at the end. And before we get started, I'll just kind of give you a brief overview of what this talk is today, because I know it's like super vague. It's called One Step at a Time, A Roadmap to Made Service Success. What does that mean? <laughs> so to break it down, basically, it's going to be kind of a walkthrough of all of the different areas of your business. And it's going to be um, just kind of a deep dive into the like every section, like I feel like your, your business is split out into different departments, right? So we're going to go through each department and we're going to talk about what you need to be doing. And if you're not doing it, you need to be making a list of the things you need to do. But the whole point of this is kind of the roadmap element, right? So at the very end of it, we are going to talk about how to build your roadmap because you're going to be really overwhelmed. And I know there's a ton of other amazing talks at this summit that you guys are watching and a ton of brilliant speakers and lots of action items that you're going to want to do. So so I'm going to basically show you how to create like a simplified roadmap so that you don't get overwhelmed and that you can just take it one step at a time, right? So that's the point of this talk. And at the end, I will be sending out a really awesome freebie. And so um, we'll talk about that then. But thank you guys again for joining. And let's one step at a time, a roadmap to made service success. Okay, so category one is automation, paperwork, and internal processes. So write down the top three things that you need to do or that you need to learn or that you need to get back to or whatever as we go through these categories. So each category, there's five categories. Each category, by the end of this talk, you should have three things listed under each category. So there will be 15 things total, okay? That's your step one. That's all you need to do throughout this talk. Just watch, listen, learn, write down your top three things as we go through each category, okay? So let's go ahead and get started with category one, automation, paperwork, and internal processes. Okay, so scheduling. If For those of you that do not have a scheduling software, for those of you that are on pen and paper, that are actually physically writing down who your clients are, and whenever somebody cancels, you have to like soul crushingly like erase their name out of a book, and it's I can't even imagine how much that must hurt. So for those of you that are still doing it the old school way, it's fine in the beginning. It totally is. I've talked to so many people that are like that, that have started like that. One of them had like 14 cleaners and she was still doing it on pen and paper. I don't even think she had a computer. So it is possible. It's not that it's not possible. Everything that I show you is not, I'm not saying it's the right way. I'm saying it's the more efficient way. So, you know, there's a right way to do everything. As long as the task is done, as long as your clients are getting cleaned and nobody's missing the reminders or whatever, like, Okay, well, that's the right way then. As long as the things are being done that need to be done, then you're doing it the right way. But how much time are you wasting doing it? So that's really where we have to implement the solutions, such as a scheduling software. Um, and for those of you that have a scheduling software and you're way past this, just stay tuned. Well, we're going to go into all kinds of other stuff. Don't worry. So trying to touch on everything for everybody. Um, so, of course, you should look at ZenMade because they're amazing. I love working for ZenMade, and I love using ZenMade every day in my maid service. But whatever software that you do decide to get, just make sure that it's easy to use. Make sure that it is uh, as automated as possible. So like with ZenMade, we've got automated reminders to your clients, your cleaners, follow-up or follow-up uh, emails to the clients after their cleans, um, you know, all of these things, mobile app, check-in, clock-in, clock-out, GPS, timestamping, payroll. I mean, it's amazing. So if you can find a software that's uh, like that, of course, try ZenMade first because I think you'll love it. But if you, for some reason, want to do something else, that's fine. Um, just make sure that it is something that's constantly innovating. Make sure that when you check their website, like their actual, not their software, but their actual website where you find out about them, look at the bottom of the website. And if it says, like, 
copyright 2017 or something, what that tells you is they're not actually doing anything with the software. They're not updating it. They're not adding new features. They're not listening to the users and implementing that kind of feedback. So just keep that in mind when you're looking at a software to make sure that that company is really up to speed and on their game with what's actually happening out there because technology moves so fast. And if a software company is not committed to following the new trends that are out and the new softwares and technologies that come out, then it's going to quickly be left behind. It's going to be left in the dust and you guys are going to be stuck with a crappy software that has glitches and that's, you know, just really archaic and doesn't actually move fa very fast like the new ones do. So that's kind of a tip that you should be looking for. Um, and make sure that you're choosing one that will allow you to grow and scale. So uh, make sure that whatever software you pick, that it's also going to work for you whenever you're three times the size that you are now. Because you always want to try to implement the solutions for a business three times your size. So that way, when you do get to that, you will have no problems transitioning. I've seen a ton of people that have had to transition from a small business into a medium business into a large business. And since they never set up the right things in the beginning, then it was a huge, huge obstacle to overcome to actually swing whatever you pick, make sure it works for you. We all have free trials, so check it out. Whatever software you choose to go with, just check out the free trial, You know, play with it, put some fake people in it, see how it feels. Whatever software you pick, it should feel like an extension of you because the soft, your scheduling software is like the entire you know, heart of your business. So make sure that you're picking the right one because you don't want to have to pick one and then put all your stuff in and then transition into another one because that's just a whole other nightmare. And then you got to relearn everything. So choose the right one right off the bat. So let's talk about scaling up, setting up to scale because mo money, mo problems. And what I mean by that is the more money that your business makes, then you're growing and you're going to have new problems that you never even realized would be problems before. So for example, whenever you're small, you don't really have to worry about um, having monthly clients versus every four week clients. This is just one of the things that I actually personally had to deal with whenever I got bigger and I was like, crap, that's something I did not do right in the beginning. So in the beginning, I had monthly clients, which means that I had my clients set up on a, you know, the ones that did monthly, I had them set up to be like the first Friday of every month or the second Tuesday of every month. Okay, that's what monthly is. However, when I got bigger and I realized that monthly does not really work with the biweeklies. So instead, I should have set it up with every four week clients instead of monthly clients, right? So then I had to call all of my monthly clients and get them switched over to an every four week schedule. And that way I could set up my schedule to where it was bi-weeklies and monthlies so that they could fall on the same, like the rotation was, you know, even and it would fall on the same thing. So I could set it up to there where there was no conflicts or anything. With monthlies, it would just randomly, you know, land because every month has a different amount of weeks in it and it was just not... It was just a nightmare. So that's like one tip if you're starting in the beginning. You do every four weeks instead of monthly. And transitioning into a growth mindset. So it's easy to get stuck and it's easy to uh, be happy with where you are. Maybe not necessarily happy, but be comfortable with where you are. And that's okay if you don't have any like dreams to get bigger or scale or whatever, but unless you're consistently trying to outdo yourself and unless you are tracking the things like your churn, which are the people that are leaving your maid service every month, um, and that's called attrition, by the way, so the, the natural lossage of customers that you have is your attrition rate. And if you're tracking that, then you'll know that in order to grow, you need to actually make up the people that left and add to that. So I think a lot of people have, um, trouble with the whole like actually having a growth mindset they just have like a mindset of just you know stability like let's just make sure we make it through another month let's make sure we can make it through payroll let's make sure that we don't lose any more clients but it shouldn't be like that you should never just be trying to survive you should always be trying to grow so unless you don't want to and again success is different for everybody if you want to just stay a small maid service perfectly fine. So I'm talking to the ones that don't want to just stay small. I'm talking to the ones that want to grow huge. And there's a ton of awesome books out there. Um, oh my gosh, there's just so, so many. There's obviously E-Myth, read that one. That's all about being um, 
an operator uh, of your business and not inside of your business. So it kind of like makes you analyze who you are as a business owner. And if you're kind of like too involved, you know, of course that for our industry, that means are you in the field cleaning? Because you can't really grow if you're in the field cleaning. You just don't have the bandwidth. You're one person. So uh, read the E-Myth. That's a great one. It's by Michael Gerber. Uh, there's one called Scaling Up, and that teaches you the Rockefeller habits that you need to make sure your team and your business uh, is set up to scale. Um, it's definitely, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you should be researching and listening to podcasts and watching YouTube videos. I mean, there's just so much information out there. So there's really no excuse. I would say that I think the number one um, problem or mistake that I see people make is their lack of setting time aside to learn. Like that is the most important thing you can do as a business owner and as a person just in general, just always be learning. If you're always learning, you're always growing, okay? If you stop doing that and you stop taking that time out every day or every other day or whatever, where you can really focus on developing yourself as a person and as a business owner, that's whenever your business gets stagnant, that's whenever you hit burnout, that's whenever you start questioning why, why did I start this business, why do I still do this, I'm so stressed out all the time. You'll never be happy unless you're constantly reaching for happiness. Let's talk about internal success. So internally, like the infrastructure of your business, you should have obviously all of your forms set up. You should have them you know, properly branded and you should have them uh, set up to where, as automated as possible too. If you can have it to where, uh, for example, our customer guidelines are digitally sent to our customers every time that we um, book a new appointment. And we make sure that they sign those and send those back before we go clean and we tell them that on the phone, like we are required to have this back before we show up. Um, you know, so there's a ton of forms that you can implement in your business such as like, your quality check forms, your, and we've got all of that set up with Google Drive, so we have, uh, or Google Sheets, so we've got a quality check, like Google Sheet log, where we, you know, type in everybody's scores, and it's got, it's a whole, like, metric thing, and then we have, like, the printable ones that Amanda, my operations manager, will go and take with her to the cleans and actually fill out and check mark next to the things they missed and whatnot, and then give them their score, and then they put them in, and it's a whole system. But if you have these systems set up, then this is where things are not going to slip through the cracks. So this is where your clients are going to feel like you really care about them. Because if you do a quality check in the beginning and then you never go back, then seven months later, the client calls and cancels and they don't tell you why. Well, you would have known had you gone back and done quality checks periodically. So typically we always do a quality check. We always do a quality check on the first clean, of course, but we also do a quality check like throughout, um, like every quarter we try to hit them. So that's something that's really important to maintain that like relationship with the client. Um, other than quality check stuff, obviously having the proper uh, onboarding forms for your new hires. If you have a good system and you don't miss anything, I talked to somebody the other day where they were like, I don't even, I haven't even filled out the paperwork yet for this new hire and she started like a week and a half ago or something. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So that stuff is super important. If you don't have a system to get all of this stuff organized and structured out, I would recommend using, I mean, I recommend using ClickUp, which is my absolute favorite project management software. That's how I organize everything in all of my companies. I've got Magic Maids broken down to um, to each department, and within each department are all of the things that we do, and they're, I'm able to assign them to myself or to Amanda, set due dates, reminders, tasks. I mean, it's just an amazing digital infrastructure for my maid service. So for those of you that really, really need that organization and that structure, totally look at ClickUp, and it's ClickUp.com. It's not expensive at all. I think it was like five bucks a month. And um, it's definitely something I would recommend. And then you can actually embed all of the forms that you need right there in ClickUp. So you have everything in there. We've got our welcome packets in there. So for those of you that don't do um, or that want to implement things like welcome walkthroughs, that's what we call them. Uh, we have the customer guidelines in there printed out, even though they've already digitally signed them. People tend to like to have a hard copy. Uh, we've got our welcome letter to, you know, just welcome them to the Magic Maids family. We've got our introduction to our survey process. So we use Quality Driven, which Martha Woodward, the creator of Quality Driven, is also on this Maid Summit. And so is Maria Dorian. Both of them were actually the creators. And Maria is actually also on the Zen Maid team. So 
there's a talk on there, they each have a talk on here and Martha will tell you more about Quality Driven, but it is an amazing software and it's the way that we make sure that our clients are happy because they get a survey after every single clean and it's super easy. They just click a smiley face and then it comes back and this is how we constantly reward our team. So every month we have our team meetings, we give them a reward based on whoever won the survey scores over the last month because you can run a report in there and see who's in first and all of that. Um, but basically like, you know, in that welcome packet, that walkthrough, we have the introduction to that and it explains to the client why it's so important to us and explains that they have to respond to these surveys because we're never going to be able to fix anything if we don't know that something's wrong, right? And uh, we tell them like, even if it's the smallest thing, even if they move the remote to the wrong place, just tell us so that we can make sure that we don't do it again because we don't want to lose people over teeny tiny things that they were just too embarrassed to say or too embarrassed to confront us about or whatever. Most people are not confrontational. So giving them an outlet and telling them it's okay, please be confrontational basically, it's going to um, give them like the peace of mind to know that you guys really do care. So, uh, so yeah, so the welcome packets, all of those kinds of forms that are in there, um, we also have a, like a new client service agreement where it's got their estimates and their ongoing rates and all of that. But all of these things are super important to have. Whenever you have it all in one spot, that's really where you're going to succeed. Most people that are all disorganized that I see, it's because their their forms are all over the place. They'll be like, yeah, I have that. Oh, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere. I think it's in my drive or I've got it printed out in this file cabinet over here or I've got it on my phone or whatever. I mean, it's just, they're a mess. And the way that you kind of like fail in that area is by not having everything in one spot. So your first piece of advice there is just get all, gather all of your forms together that you have and make a, an organized structure for them. Whether you use ClickUp, whether you use Google Drive, um, Dropbox, whatever, just get organized with it, okay? And you know that everything you have is in one spot. And make sure they're all branded. Make sure they're pretty. Make sure they have your logo on them. Don't make them look like something from like the 90s that you put together. Make it look modern and clean and professional. And for any of you that need help with that, Go on canva.com and you can actually make them in there and you can put like a really pretty border. You can upload your logo. You can make it look super, super nice. So I would definitely recommend, um, you know, doing that, getting them all organized. And then as far as what systems you should use and processes you should implement. Whew, okay. Systems. I recommend using, um, so I have, uh, what's it called? Sign request. And that is just like DocuSign, but it's just a lot cheaper. And that one, I think at this time of this recording, it's, I think it was $84 for the year. So you can obviously create templates in there and you can digitally send anything. So if you want to send your credit card authorization forms, if you want to send um, your customer guidelines, if you want to send a service agreement, anything that you want, you can send it in there digitally and then they have to sign it and send it back. So your first system I would definitely say is get your, get sign request. Um, and then obviously your scheduling system, which we already talked about, get that going. I would recommend getting Zapier if you are going to try to connect softwares. So if you have something like QuickBooks or if you have, uh, you know, your Facebook business page or if you have MailChimp or, you know, all of these different things, you can connect them all using a tool called Zapier, which is basically the most brilliant invention ever. It's like, it's just a connector of two softwares where you make a trigger in one software and an action in the other. So it allows softwares to talk to each other that don't have a native integration built out already. So it's a beautiful thing. Um, other systems that you should have, you should definitely have a marketing tool. So if you are using MailChimp or Infusionsoft or Constant Contact, or you know, there's a ton of them out there. Um, MailChimp is probably the cheapest, if not the freest. They were free. I think they just changed it to where you have to have, I think you might have to pay $10 a month if you want to like schedule stuff, but you could just send them out, um, on, like manually. If you want to just send them out manually, like one at a time, I think you can use the free version. So just take a look at that. Uh, it's a real easy way to look professional and actually create some awesome marketing um, ads and, and emails that you want to send out to all of your leads and then all your customers as well. Make sure that you are marketing to them as well. Make sure you're asking them to upgrade their cleaning. Make sure that you are, um, you know, telling everybody that you've got gift cards whenever it's a holiday. So, you know, Black Friday comes around, send out a Black Friday email and say, hey, today only. Uh, $25 off of a gift card or whatever. And then that is going to be a great way 
for you to boost your sales overnight without even trying really. And uh, for gift cards, by the way, that would be another system. Uh, we use Gift Card Cafe, which was a super easy way to implement it on your website. It's a digital gift card. So we don't actually have physical gift cards. They just go online, they buy it, they print it out, kind of like how you do like at the movies and whatnot. Um, you can just do it all right there, print it out, and there you go. And then the money just goes directly into your bank account, which is amazing. So that's a great system to use. I would also say check out Google Analytics, Google My Business, check out all those Google things because Google is super important and you have to rank on Google. If you are not um, tracking the data, tracking the impressions and the visitors to your website and all of that, you need to be, you need to know what is going on on your website. It's so important. Um, so what processes you should implement? Definitely a process of checking all of your statistics and your data and your analytics. Now, if you are not that person and you don't actually want to be in charge of that, that's perfectly fine. Outsource it. You should never do things that you are not happy doing. You are the business owner and you should be spending your time doing the things that make you happy and the things that make you money. So uh, as far as the, the data tracking and stuff goes, if you're not good at that, then it's probably not going to make you any money because you're probably not going to do very well at it. So definitely know your strengths and your weaknesses. And if that's one of your weaknesses, give it to somebody else. Give it to somebody that's amazing. I would recommend Landon Sanford. He is amazing. He's a Google ads guru in our industry. He just does cleaning companies. Uh, he's also my fiance. So shout out to him, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not just biased. He really is great at what he does. So I would recommend getting in contact with him, but there's tons of people out there that are willing to, to help with the Google ads and the SEO and all that kind of stuff. But you should know what's going on with all of your stuff. You should have a booking process. You should have a booking form or a quote form on your website. You should have all of these things. Um, so yeah, just, those are some systems that you need to use. I would say the main one would be ClickUp. If you can use something like that to organize everything, that's the most game changing thing I think out of everything that I named ClickUp is the game changer. Automation. Okay. My favorite section. So what should we automate? What will your life look like once you automate? You can run your business from anywhere if you're automated. <laughs> Ask me. I fly all over the country every single month and go uh, go dive into other people's maid services, and I would never be able to do that if I did not have my maid service as automated as possible. So what you should automate, all of your communication should be automated. You should not be manually sending out text reminders to your clients. You should not be sending out follow-up texts. You should be texting your clients, actually. Just, like, knock that off. Don't text your clients. If, they, if you text your clients, they think they can text you at all hours of the night, okay? They will completely interrupt your family time. It will take over your life, and it is a nightmare. They also are not confrontational, so they will feel a lot uh, easier complaining to you on a text message than if they have to call you, okay? So just keep that in mind, and I can tell you, I've never had a client text me. It doesn't happen. I, they don't even know they... Well, it's not an option now. In the first year of my business, I had Google Voice, and Google Voice does have a texting option, but I pretended like it didn't exist. I told the clients, like, we had a couple of people text us randomly, and we did not respond. We acted like we never got it. Even if it was, like, super important, we just completely ignored it. And the reason is because they will call if they don't hear from you. They will call you and they will say, hey, I sent you a text message because blah, blah, blah. And then you can say, uh, "We this is a business. This is a landline business phone. We don't have texting. It's not a cell phone. And then they go, oh. And then they never text you again. And it's fantastic. And we never have to worry about this. Well, now we don't have a texting capability anyway. I don't think. Anyways. Um, so yeah, but it it's, makes it so much easier to live your life happy and clock out at five o'clock and actually be done with work if they cannot text you. That's just my own personal thing. Um, now, automating, obviously automating your follow-ups, automating your reminders. We have automated emails going out three days before the clean because our cancellation policy is 48 hours. So we give them that 24 hour buffer if they need to call and change or cancel anything. And then we also have the automated texts go out the night before. So that's really for them to go, oh, crap, i got to pick up the house. Like, that's typically why. And then, let's see, we also have the work orders going out to the cleaners automatically. Um, if you can automate your sending out your customer guidelines, that should be automatic. Uh, if you can automate in, like, if you use ClickUp and you can automate a system where it's going to automatically um, – 
generate the due dates for things. So like every time that a lead comes in to Zenmade, it'll it I have it set up to where it automatically pops up into ClickUp and assigns Amanda and assigns a due date to call that person immediately, uh, which is lovely. And then um, marketing. So that stuff can definitely be automated. You can batch all of your social media stuff. You can schedule those out. You can use MailChimp to create awesome campaigns, or you can hire uh, my company, Rescue My Maid Service. We have an awesome mini marketing package that's for MailChimp and social media, where it's just all of the emails that you need to market to your leads and to your customers, and it's uh, 10 social media branded ads a month that we go in and schedule for you. So if you're interested in that, uh, please feel free to check that out on rescuemymaidservice.com. Uh, but if you want to do it yourself, totally cool. Just get it automated and it will make your life so much easier. Okay, so category two, finances, budgeting, and KPIs. So for those of you that don't know what KPIs are, that stands for Key Performance Indicators. These are the quick snapshot numbers that you really need to uh, track and analyze as you go throughout the month so that you can kind of see exactly what's going on in your business, okay? So we're gonna divide and conquer. And what I mean by that is, uh, if you look at your business as your, your revenue from your business as a whole, like a 100%, like a pie, um, you need to know where every dollar is going, first of all. I don't know if any of you guys follow Dave Ramsey, but he's like super, super smart whenever it comes to finances and budgeting and all of that kind of stuff. So uh, look him up if you haven't, he's great. Um, and basically you need to have a system in place to figure out where every dollar is going. Now, as you get bigger, you're probably not going to need to track this as uh, finely as you need to in the very beginning. Because in the beginning, every dollar really does matter, right? You're like, oh my God, I have $5 in my bank account and I'm out of Windex or whatever. I mean, I get it, I've been there. So in the beginning, yes, you need to know where every dollar is going. When you get bigger, you really need to start checking this kind of stuff, Not maybe not necessarily daily, but you know, quarterly at least, but monthly probably. So you can figure this out a couple different ways. Obviously, you can get an accountant and a bookkeeper. Um, I did that once I hit one year. So the first year, I was in charge of keeping track of all the budgeting and the finances and everything and the taxes, which, by the way, was my least favorite part about the business was the tax stuff. I absolutely hate the tax stuff. I don't understand any of it. It's frustrating to me. It's just too complicated. It should not be this complicated. It just shouldn't. It should not be this complicated to have to give them money. It's insane. But that's a whole other separate tangent. So after a year, I hired an accountant that was also a bookkeeper. So they are, you know, they play both roles basically. And so now we have a quarterly meeting where he and uh, he and I go over all of the numbers from the last three months, and we go over, you know, exactly where everything went and the percentages that everything fell into and everything. So what percentages should you be aiming for? So I followed the business model of 50 to 55% goes to payroll, okay? And that's fully loaded. So that's with the taxes and your workers comp and all of that stuff. That's fully loaded payroll, okay? Now my girls make 40% and I charge $40 an hour. So just to tangent into that real quick. If you're wondering how much you should pay your cleaners, you should typically pay them at least twice whatever your minimum wage is. That will help you immensely with your employee retention. Uh, you're not going to have an easy time keeping cleaners whenever they're making minimum wage or just above it because it's such a physically demanding job and they're not going to think it's worth it. So I do not have employee issues like at all because they make 16, if you break that down, that 40% of $40 an hour is $16 an hour. Now their percentage, so they really make like up to 20 bucks an hour if they're if they're hustling, so that's nice. Um, our minimum wage is 7.75, or I think it just went up to eight, but anyways, they are super happy with what they make and we don't have any issues with uh, employee churn really, so. Um, okay, so percentages, so 50 to 55% should go to payroll fully loaded. 15 to 20% should go to overhead. So what is overhead? That is all of your bills for your business. So that's your software costs, that's your, if you have an office, that's your rent, that's your lights, that's your, um, uh, your supplies, your cleaning supplies, your office supplies. That is if you have office staff, if you've got an actual admin person or, or like an operations manager or something, that's overhead, okay? So all of that is overhead. All of the bills that are associated with your business is overhead minus 
the marketing cost. So the marketing is actually a separate percentage, and that should be at least 10% of your business if you're trying to grow, okay? So 10% should go to marketing. That is going to be your, uh, you know, the cost of obviously all your marketing. So any of your printed materials, any of your, um, like in, if you have Infusionsoft or MailChimp or any of those marketing softwares, those are marketing costs. If you have um, t-shirts, stuff like that that you want to go out, you kind of put that in either really, but you can put t-shirts in overhead or marketing. If you've got your logo and your phone number and everything on them, technically it's marketing too, but uh, your Chamber of Commerce membership fees, your B&I fees, all of those things, that's all marketing costs. So 10% goes to marketing, which leaves 20%, which should be your salary. So your owner's salary should be 20%. Now, if you are like most people, you're probably not going to take a salary the first year, okay, at least the first year. And that's fine. That's perfectly fine. You can put that 20% right back into the business. You can put it right back into marketing and bump it from 10% to 30% to marketing. And then you will grow a lot faster. And then that will enable you to obviously take your own paycheck uh, sooner rather than later, rather than taking like a, a super measly paycheck for longer, you know. So if you do have the ability to take uh, or to not pay yourself for at least a year, it is super helpful to grow. So, um, so yeah, that's kind of the breakdown. 50 to 55 percent payroll, 15 to 20 percent overhead, 20 percent to you, and 10 percent to marketing. Okay. Now, of course, you can adjust these percentages as needed, but I would definitely make sure that the the payroll percentage doesn't go much lower than that because that means that you're probably not paying enough. So, okay, do these stay the same as I grow? Do the percentages stay the same as you grow? Yes, the percentages should stay the same. However, you will have more flexibility with them as you get bigger. Not really with the payroll amount, that should stay the exact same. And I would definitely say that your, your salary should stay the same. But your marketing dollars and your overhead will vary. So you're, you're gonna find that your overhead is probably going to, well once you get like an office, that might increase a lot. Um, and, or it could even decrease because you've got, if you start buying everything in big bulk quantities, stuff like that, then you're going to find that you're not really spending a ton in supplies and whatnot every month because you've got so much back stock kind of a thing. Um, and then your marketing, if you are at the point where you're just packed, like you're just super full up and you can't take anybody on, you might lower your marketing spend because you just physically cannot take anybody. So you're just wasting your money, like getting clients because you have to tell them no and turn them away. Um, and then you might want to put that money that you would have spent on marketing, you might want to throw that into overhead and pay for some job ads to go out. You might want to go pay for like a booth at a job fair to get more employees because obviously if you're turning away work, that means that you need employees. So you just got to kind of be flexible. And that's one of Dave Ramsey's like rules is be able to roll with the punches. So obviously finances are super important and you have to be on top of them and you have to be willing to be flexible with them. And in the beginning, you're going to be robbing Peter to pay Paul and that's totally normal. So don't freak out about that. You will get out of that phase as long as you follow the system and as long as you don't overstretch yourself. Don't be one of those people that's like, oh, I'm going to put everything on a credit card or oh, I'm going to take out a big business loan. You don't need to do that. You just don't need to do that. Your business can be self-sufficient and self-sustaining as long as you set it up correctly. So it's a really great business model to follow, and this industry is one of the businesses with the lowest overhead to start and everything, so you totally can ramp up. I promise you, I started with zero dollars, like zero dollars. I started it from my kitchen making homemade cleaning products, and I was broke as a joke and just totally just ramped it up from nothing. So um, totally can be done. Okay, so KPIs, your key performance indicators. Which ones should you be tracking and where should you track them? Well, if you're using ZenMade, a lot of them are actually tracked in ZenMade. And I have actually talked to a ton of ZenMade users that don't even realize this. So for those of you that are ZenMade users, and maybe you didn't even know this, yes, you can. Um, your dashboard is obviously the first stop whenever you sign in, and that's gonna show you some of the KPIs as far as what your, how many current recurring customers you have, and what your forecasted revenue is for the month versus your actual revenue so far, and how many bookings came in from your website or quote requests that came in from your website, those types of things. All that's on your dashboard. But you can also check 
in the marketing uh, ma maximizer report, you can also check the conversion rates from lead to customer and from customer to recurring broken down by each marketing source. So I can actually physically see how many leads came in from Google last month and how many were converted, how many of those were converted to recurring, all of that. So those are super important KPIs. There's also something called Gecko Board that I've heard about. I haven't personally used Gecko Board, but Chris from Zenmade, I believe he's the one that told me that, about this. And you can track your KPIs on there and you can throw it up on like a screen and your employees can actually like see it whenever they come in and just follow along. I think it's super important to involve your employees in the growth of your business because it makes them excited to be part of your success story and not be looked at like just a number. Um, I'm a huge, huge proponent of involving the team in as many ways as I can. Now, of course, I don't share like, you know, any kind of tax information or like, you know, what's going on with the, with the finances as far as that kind of stuff goes. But I do share with them everything on the marketing side. I share with them all of the upcoming events. I get their opinion. I get their input. I get their suggestions for things that they want to see done. It's super important to involve your team. And you, if you can build out an employee culture like that, you're not going to have uh, very high turnover. So keep that in mind as well. Um, so yeah, so Gecko Board as far as KPIs, but you should be tracking your attrition rate, how many people are leaving your business. If you're a small business, it should be around 3%. If you are bigger, it might be a little bit uh, higher or it might be a little bit lower. It really just kind of depends on how you run everything. Um, when you're real small though, your attrition rate should be very, very low because you don't have very many clients. So you shouldn't be losing very many clients, but obviously the bigger you get, the more clients you're gonna naturally lose but you'll have a lot more clients to begin with, so it's not really gonna, you know, it just kind of balances out. But keep that in mind, and if you are under 5% at any stage of your business, you, you're doing pretty good. So you should not be losing clients left and right. And if you are, then tracking this KPI is going to alert you and go, oh crap, I'm losing clients left and right. My attrition rate was 10% this month, something is wrong. I need to figure out what is going on. Oh, it was because this cleaner has been screwing up all over the place and nobody caught it, or you know, now we need to really address this and put her back through training, or you know, whatever it is that you wanna to do to address it. So. Um, so your revenue growth, your attrition rate, how many leads you're getting, how many you've closed, your conversion rates, all of these things um, should be tracked. And your conversion rates, by the way, should be around 50%. So from lead to customer should be 50%. That means 50% of the phone calls that you get or 50% of the leads that you get should be converted into customers. And then of those 50% of, or I'm sorry, of those customers that you've converted, 50% of those should be converted to recurring customers, okay? So that is kind of what you should be tracking. Category three, marketing, advertising, and networking. This is my favorite category because I love people and I love to talk to people. So for me, networking is very, very natural. I love just going out and meeting new people and it's very exciting for me. For a lot of you, that is a super uncomfortable situation and I totally get it. But the good news is you can learn to do this. This is not something that you just have or you don't have. You can totally learn to be a powerful influencer or a um, just a master networker or whatever. So basically, um, there's a bunch of people that you should definitely look up as far as like learning how to talk to people and learning how to make people listen to you or make people want to be around you or whatever. Um, there's I've heard of uh, Dale Carnegie is a good one. He wrote I, I bought his book on Audible, but like a lot of people, I buy books and then I don't ever get to read them. So, <laughs> but he has one called how to, it's called how to win friends and influence people. And I started reading it, but it was basically, it talks about the, um, the importance of making people feel like they're heard. So whenever you have, you know, the communication, that's all skills. So when you talk to people, if you have the skill of allowing them to feel heard and allowing them to feel like at the end of the conversation, they're just like, wow, what a pleasant conversation. I want to talk to that person again. That's where you want to be. So don't take up all of the time for yourself. Don't jump in and be like me, 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 me. You know, that's kind of what people get um, put off by. So he's a great one to look up. Also, uh, Jordan Belfort, if you need help with the art of sales persuasion, Jordan Belfort has a, uh, a series called Straight Line Persuasion, and that is, he's the Wolf of Wall Street, that's who Jordan Belfort is, for those of you that don't know, so he's kind of 
I think he's known notoriously as like the best salesperson in the world or whatever. So you can learn a lot of tips from him as far as influencing people's buying decisions and those kinds of things. So that will help you um, in person whenever you're trying to do quotes and stuff like that. But let's talk about why you want to be a big deal. So the importance of networking. Networking, especially in a small town, is so important because usually, if you're in a small town like me, everybody knows everybody. And if you have a good reputation, and it'll start growing because everybody talks, right? So go to as many events as you can. So I know it's super easy to not do this. It's way easier to just go to work in the morning, Go clean a house, go home, do payroll, whatever, and go to sleep and do it all over again. But if you do not put in the time to go to these events every single week, I'm serious, every week in the beginning. Now, as you're bigger, if you're a huge company and you don't really need to um, to do this as often because you're just huge and you don't really need to grow that fast, um, I get it. But in the beginning, you should be networking as much as possible. So. Chamber of Commerce, if you can join that, that's usually pretty cheap. It's usually like 100 bucks a year, 120 bucks a year to join. And then that way you can go to their monthly meetings. Some towns even have it to where the network or the chamber meets like once a week. So you can do those. Um, and then you can even have, you'll even get a plaque, which I can actually show you. You'll get a plaque that says member of the Chamber of Commerce. And it's got their, the uh, you know, your name on it or whatever. And that always looks pretty professional whenever people are in your office and they're like oh you're part of the chamber you know and you're like oh yes I'm fancy like that so chamber B&I is another one now that one is a commitment and it is not cheap so that I mean okay it's not that it's super expensive but it's that you know in the beginning I know that your budget is usually pretty tight in the beginning so if you're at the level where you can pay for um, B&I it is a really great tool it is, I think when I did it, it was like 700 for the year. And then I want to say it was like 120 a quarter or something like that. So it's definitely an investment. However, I have made that up well over what I paid to be in BNI because I made great relationships and I still to this day, and I'm not even in BNI anymore. I, I dropped out, I want to say like six months ago, but, and that was purely not because I had anything against BNI, but because my BNI was so early and I had to get up at like six o'clock in the morning. No, I had to get up at 5.30. Yeah, 5.30 in the morning. And for those of you that know me, that does not fly with my schedule. I usually work till about 3 a.m. So that was like not working out. And I was exhausted. <laughs> I just couldn't do it. So if you can find a BNI that's like at a good time for your schedule, um, it really is a great, great thing and you just show up and it'll teach you how to talk to people it will teach you it'll make you get up and you'll have like a 30 second prep, uh, pitch that you have to do every week and the whole point of it is to refer business to each other and I really did love it when I went I really did so that's one thing um, okay and then there's also like meetup.com if you can go on that website if you're especially if you're in a big city so if you're in an area where there's a ton of people go on meetup.com and you will find networking groups. You'll just find groups for anything. And don't just do the groups that are like business groups. Join a book club, join a gardening club, join something that you have an interest in because you're naturally going to talk to people about what you do. So it doesn't even matter what kind of meetup it is. The whole point of networking is just to get out and meet people. It doesn't even have to be a business meeting. It can be anything because they're going to ask you, what's your name? What do you do? And then you're going to become, you'll be known as, you know, the one that owns the cleaning business. So get your butt out there. And of course, Facebook groups like that is too easy. There is no excuse for you guys to not be in all of the mom groups, all the local mom groups, um, all of the entrepreneur groups on Facebook that are in your area there's a ton of them I'm sure unless you're literally I mean I'm in the middle of nowhere and I've got at least five so especially if you're in a big city you're gonna have a ton but you can go on Facebook you can search groups you can click on the left and click groups and then you can click explore I believe and then you can say popular near me and then all of the groups that are actually your local groups are gonna pop up join all the mom groups join all of the networking or the entrepreneur groups because they're the ones that's going to let you post like ads and stuff for you to um, 
market yourself because they're all there for the same reason. So they're also going to want to do that. That's the whole purpose of those kind of groups. Now, the mom groups are different. Those you want to be in, you want to try to uh, watch for those keywords that pop up like made. I, I do four keywords are just made, house, mess, and clean. I search those four keywords in all the mom groups every day, and if a conversation pops up that's like, does anybody know a good house cleaner or whatever, then of course that's the opportunity for me to jump in and say, magicmaids.org, blah, 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 you know, and that's super easy. I just posted a thing about doing this a couple weeks ago, and one of the girls in my group tried it out, and she did it, and she posted the next day and said she had over 40 estimate requests from one post that she had responded to in one of those uh, local groups. So I was like, that is amazing. So yeah, it totally works and it can just, just completely make your business just off like a rocket. So do that, but get off of your butt and make a name for yourself because people are not going to buy from you if they don't know who you are. So get out there and make a name for yourself. Okay. When are you ready to invest in marketing? You should be investing in marketing as soon as you can. So as soon as you're able to physically start putting money into marketing, you should be. I understand that in the beginning it's hard because a lot of you, this is your only income. I get it. But you're going to have to be as frugal as possible because the, the moment that you start putting money into marketing is the moment that you're going to start growing faster than you would if you didn't put money into marketing. That's just science. That's just a fact. So as soon as you can. Put your money in and of course 10% is like the the recommended amount that you should kind of put into marketing but I know it's it's hard to do that in the beginning because if you're only making a thousand dollars a month a hundred dollars to go to marketing is a lot of money because you know I, I, I get it so just be frugal with it and as soon as you're ready start investing in it and what should your conversion rate be we talked about that 50% should be your conversion rate from lead to customer and from customer to recurring your average, average customer acquisition cost. So that is how much money it takes in marketing dollars to retain one recurring client. So that is different by marketing source, but the average in our industry is $250. So that means that if you spend $250 in marketing, then you're going to gain one recurring client. It sounds like a lot, but it's not really because one recurring client brings you an average of $3,000 per year. Okay, so would you spend two fifty dollars to gain twenty seven fifty, dollars whatever that math is? Yes, of course you would. So it doesn't, it's not really that much, but that's the, that is the industry average. So in the beginning when you're like, oh my God, but I spent $100 on door hangers and I haven't gotten anybody yet and it seems like it's not working, well, you have to think about the fact that if you've only spent $100, you haven't even hit the two fifty target yet to gain one client anyway. And with door hangers especially, you typically your, your uh, ROI, your return on investment for door hangers is 1% or less. I mean, it's really not that much. So for every 100 door hangers you hang, one person might call. So keep that in mind. Print is always way less effective than digital uh, marketing. So keep that in mind. Um, Okay, which marketing sources to use? Okay, yeah, so that's right where we're at. So definitely be careful with the Facebook paid ads. A lot of people are spent, not spending, a lot of people are wasting money on Facebook paid ads because they, Facebook makes it look like it's super easy and like all you have to do is just click these couple buttons and you're gonna get all these new customers. Does not work like that. I have not heard anyone tell me that they've cracked the code on Facebook social media marketing because I don't know what it is. It's something with our industry, but I'm telling you over and over and over again, I hear everybody saying they just wasted their money. So, and I mean, you might get the occasional, yeah, I got one or two or whatever, but overall I hear that it is just not very successful. Uh, it's definitely not successful in my area and it just seems like it's not really successful for anybody else. So be careful with the Facebook paid ads. Now you should absolutely be, you know, jumping in all the groups and doing the organic stuff, like making sure that your, your reputation is solid on social media. That is very, very important. But share it as much as you can. Share your, your beautiful ads that you're creating. Typically, use something like Canva and create your beautiful ads. Put them on there. Share them in all the groups. Share them with your friends. Tell them to share. Uh, but make sure your presence is known. Now, that's all free. All the social media stuff I'm talking about, you can do that for free. Uh, now, for paid, you should be doing, as soon as you're ready, you should be doing Google Ads. That's the number one marketing source that... Uh, I see across the board. Uh, there's Home Advisor, there's Angie's List, there's Yelp, all of those, those three things specifically. And I think Home Advisor and Angie's List have combined now. I think it's just one thing. But those three things 
they work really well in some areas and they work really terribly in others. So be careful. You have to be on your game. You have to be able to answer the phone immediately as soon as the phone rings or else it's not going to work well for you um, because it's going to give it to the next person, the next competitor, and then they'll answer the phone and then you're going to lose it. So be careful with those. I got lucky enough to get Home Advisor leads for free for life. And that is because I called them and I said I was canceling after a year. And I said my conversion rate was only 13%. And I knew that because I tracked, I can track that in ZenMade. So all I did was look at the total overall conversion. It was 13%, which is horrible. And I was paying, you know, $17 to $40 per lead to get, you know. And I'm like, this is not, it's crazy. It's not working. It's not worth it. So I called them to cancel and they were like, no, 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 don't leave us. We'll just give you free leads forever. And I was like, what? Like, what's the catch? And they're like, no, no catch. We just don't want to lose you because you have a great profile and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, okay. So now all I have to do is pay the yearly fee to Home Advisor, which is like 260 bucks. Well, yeah, that's totally worth it. Like 260 for the whole year and I get all my leads for free. Totally worth it. So yes, that I would do. But be careful if you're paying for every lead, you need to track your conversion rates because HomeAdvisor is notorious for having really crappy leads, for having wrong number of people, people that are looking for things other than cleaning services, and blah, 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 giving you duplicate leads. Be careful with all that. Yelp is, I hear, absolutely terrible with posting your bad reviews and taking off your good ones. I don't use Yelp at all. I've just heard nothing but horrible things and Yelp's not really a huge deal in my area anyway, so we just avoid Yelp altogether. But uh, but all of those things do charge you per lead. There's also things like Google Local Services, which I have heard good things about, but it's not available in every area. So like we don't have Google Local Services here. It's not a thing yet. Where I'm also in the Midwest where we get everything last, which sucks. We just got our first Starbucks like a couple weeks ago. It's pretty amazing, but uh, yeah, we're pretty much last to get everything. So uh, Google Local Services, look into that if you have it in your area. And then marketing as far as like email marketing is obviously a big part of it. So as I mentioned earlier, if you wanted to like outsource that, you could have Rescue My Maid Service, my company, do that for you. We do the MailChimp integration with ZenMade and social media. We do all that together. And um and that's really, really affordable. And then there's also stuff like uh, Constant Contact and Infusionsoft and Active Campaign. And I mean, there's a ton of them out there. And you can create all these yourself. Typically, they're not easy to create unless you're using something like MailChimp. Um, and a lot of them are just a little too complicated to navigate. Um, but you, you, know, you can decide if you want to spend your time doing that or if you want to outsource it. But you should definitely have email marketing going. That is something you should be doing. And then, da, 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 da. yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all the big ones. If you have the option to put your put your ad in, like, a, a local magazine or, like, a newspaper and stuff like that, just be careful because those are typically really expensive and they don't really give you a lot of uh, great return on your investment. I have not heard very many people say that they get – a lot of calls from those and they're usually really expensive so just keep an eye on those um, and then yeah if you can get a billboard that'd be cool but make sure that you're getting a really good deal on it <laughs> don't do like don't pay thousands of dollars for a billboard in the beginning obviously um, so yeah and I think that's pretty much it on the marketing sources so let's move on web traffic yes you need a website if you don't have a website, get a website. Websites are not expensive. You can get one on Wix. You can make it yourself as long as you have something. Now, of course, I do not recommend Wix websites to anyone. However, in the beginning, you probably have to have one, and that's fine. But once you get bigger and you actually have money to put into getting a website done, dear God, get WordPress. Wix is just such a pain in the butt, and there's a lot of limitations to things like Wix. Um, there's just a lot of limitations. And when you get bigger, you're going to want to track certain things and you're, want, you're going to want to implement certain types of plugins and certain types of, of uh, integrations on your site. And Wix does not allow for all of everything. So use WordPress if you can. If you have the time to teach yourself WordPress, then you can totally get a theme on WordPress pretty inexpensively or you could even use one of their free themes. You can teach yourself via YouTube videos. You can teach yourself with lynda.com, L-Y-N-D-A.com. That is my favorite educational tool that there is online. It is an amazing resource that has videos to learn anything on the computer. So get on there, learn WordPress, make your own website. You can do that. However, 
That is not something that you can you should be taking lightly. If you are creating your own WordPress site and teaching yourself as you do it, which is something I did uh, the very first month before I opened my business. I made sure my website was done before I opened my business. It took me over 80 hours to get that website done because I was learning as I did it. I learned, I taught myself how to make the website as I was doing it, and it was so freaking difficult. It's not even that it was difficult, it was just extremely time consuming. And getting, you know, just the design element, I don't feel like I have a very good design eye, so I would have to, I would create it, and then I would just scrap it all and start over, and it was just like, trying to find the right pictures, and learning about all the integrations and everything. It was very, very time consuming. So just keep that in mind. Whenever people say to me, I can teach myself, I can just do it myself, and rather than paying like 1500 bucks, which is what we charge for a website that are beautiful and everything else, uh, if, if they say, well, I'd rather just do it myself rather than spending $1,500, well, if you've spent 80 hours, though, to do it, and then even at the end, it's still not like really professional looking because you're not a professional, you know what I mean? Like my website that I spent all that time on was hideous, it was hideous, I hated it. I, in the beginning, I loved it, but then once I realized how modern other people's websites looked and how like clean and fresh. I was like, oh my God, mine is so ugly. Like, what was I thinking? And it's just because I didn't know. I was just, I didn't have the design. I hadn't really, you know, I don't know. But anyways, keep that in mind. It is worth paying 1500 bucks to get a professional, beautiful website done. Um, and, web, and websites typically are up to like five grand. So, um, you know, look around. Ours are 1500. They're templated. They're beautiful. But you can get custom ones done if you want to have like your own specific type of website or whatever for like a couple grand more um, and typically people do payment plans and stuff like that but it is super important to have a perfectly modern and easy functioning easy user interface website because that is the digital storefront of your business it's the most important thing because everybody's going to google you that's how they find you that's where most people are going to find you is on the internet so make sure your site's awesome and then obviously we talked earlier, make sure you know how many people are visiting your website. Follow the step-by-step -step instructions on in those tutorials to install Google Analytics on your site. Make sure that you're tracking how many visitors are on each page. Make sure you're tracking the bounce rate. Make sure that you are watching what they're doing. If they're all going to this one specific page and then immediately leaving it, well then you know that page must be ugly. Like that page needs to be fixed. If they are completely overlooking a certain section of your website and nobody's landing on it, well then you need to redirect where their attention goes so that they go to that page if you need them to, you know. Make sure that you understand who your target market really is. A lot of people just assume that they're like, okay, yeah, our target market is, you know, moms and dads, middle age with kids, that's our target market. But what if you're in, in, in an area where most of the people that are looking up your cleaning service are like in their 50s and 60s and they don't have little small children anymore. They're all like empty nesters and they just don't, they want to travel and they don't want to take care of their house anymore because they're over it, you know, like I get it. So you won't know that unless you're really tracking your analytics. And if you if you install Google Analytics, you can see who these people are. You can see their race. You can see their age. You can see their uh, dumb, uh, their um Income levels, you can see. I mean, you can see every freaking thing about them. It's crazy. It's almost creepy how much you can see. And so that will help you to uh, to brand your business and to brand your marketing in a way that's going to really attract the people that are already coming to your website, right? So you can target your target market more specifically. So very, very important. Make sure you're tracking this stuff. The art of follow-up. How often are you following up with your leads? Are you following up with them every single time that they call you, like the day after? Because that's what you should be doing. If they call you, they get a quote, they don't actually book, and they say, I gotta think about it, or I'm gonna talk to my husband, or whatever. How many of you are just saying, okay, click, buy, and you never follow up with them? You just put it in a file, or you don't, or even worse, you don't even like track it, or put it in Zenmate, or put it in your scheduling software, or whatever. Make sure you are tracking this stuff, guys. It is so important to have your lead list built out as long and as big as possible because you could market to these people forever forever you have this big old email list and you can just completely blast emails to all of them for the rest of ever until they unsubscribe obviously but um but yeah make sure you're getting their emails whenever you're talking to them and we follow up with them every day like if they call today we would follow up with them tomorrow if they don't answer we leave a message and we would follow up with them two days later and if they don't answer 
we leave a message and then we email them. Like we have a whole system of follow up because people are busy and a lot of times they just, they will uh, book with you if you just followed up with them. They just forgot, you know what I mean? Or they got busy or whatever and now it's like, oh, it's too late. Now it's weird and I don't know if the quote's still good or whatever. Like make sure you're following up with these people. And when you tap out, we typically tap out after two phone calls, two messages, and then two emails. So if, they, if we've left two messages and sent two emails, then we'll tap out. And then we move them into the lost category. But we still have their email on file, and we're marketing to them forever. So then they immediately go into my lead nurture um, campaigns and MailChimp that I was telling you about that we did earlier. And they are now getting monthly specials. So every month, they're going to get a special email that says, this month only, save $40 on a deluxe deep clean, whatever you book or whatever. So that those people are constantly marketed to, and they'll come back, like they really will. They just maybe weren't ready yet, and then they'll come back and they'll remember because you are consistently marketing to them, which means that you have that uh, front of mind awareness and they're not going to forget about you. So yes, very, very important. How are you keeping track of your pipeline? So you could do this a bazillion different ways. I use ClickUp for mine. So we have a whole system built out in ClickUp, but you can use you know, reminders in ZenMade. You could use reminders in your Google Calendar. You could use Trello. You could use, I mean, there's just a million things you could do for this. There's so many apps and free softwares and things out there that you can actually have, like build out a pipeline and, and bring it all in. I have mine integrated through Zapier with ZenMade, so like it automatically pops in through ZenMade into ClickUp and it's this whole amazing like magical thing. So um, yeah, if you wanna get crazy and do that, do it, because it's awesome. Category four, hiring company culture and employee retention. Find the diamonds that make you shine. I'll let you read this sign because I think it's really funny when I found it. <laughs> Now hiring people who don't suck. Okay, the dreaded hiring process. Employee turnover is obviously a huge problem in this industry. It's the biggest problem that everyone faces in this industry. Screening and vetting your applicants is so incredibly important to uh, cutting out the riffraff and making sure that only the good ones come through, right? Company culture and ongoing motiva motivation, those are extremely important. So I would recommend getting a system in place as far as this whole hiring process goes. We've got a uh, process, of course, in ClickUp, and basically uh, we've got the phone interview, the pre-screening phone interview has five questions on it. It says, are you over 21? Do you have a licensed and insured vehicle? And uh, are you available to work Monday through Friday, eight to five? Can you pass a drug screen? And when we run your background check, what will we find? Those are the five things that we ask. And if they pass all of those, they check all those boxes, then they will have an in-person interview with Amanda. And Amanda will go through uh, basically like a day in the life of Magic Maid. So she will talk to them about what it really means to be a cleaner for Magic Maids, like what their responsibilities are, what they are in charge of, like what um, their schedule is gonna look like, what the pay looks like all of the like basic information that they are gonna need to know. And if they still seem very interested and she explains to them right in that first interview, by the way, she tells them like, okay, just so you know, you're not going to have a full schedule right off the bat. You will start part time because we are not going, we don't have the ability to just give somebody 40 hours a week when we hire and we're not at that level. I don't think we'll ever be at that level where I live in this town. But if you're in a big city and you've got that kind of demand, you might be at that level. and. And that's great, but for a lot of people, we're just not. So we always make sure that they're gonna be fine with ramping up. We ask them straight up, what are your financial requirements? And if they say, well, I've gotta make at least $500 a week, you know, every week, we're gonna tell them no. We're gonna be like, yeah, you know what, this just isn't a good fit. Because it's gonna take at least, like we tell them at least three months, typically it's sooner than that, but we tell them at least three months to build up their schedule. And we say it's because we wanna make sure that their skill level is there. We wanna make sure that their reliability factor is there because we're not gonna fill up their schedule only to have them quit and, with no notice and then we're screwed because we don't have anybody to cover. So, and on that note, I do always recommend having at least one cleaner more than what you need, uh, two if you can, and two reasons. One, it will force you to grow because you're gonna have that pressure on you to start getting more clients to fill up their schedule. So just magically, you'll just start growing. And two, you'll always have backup. I mean, you're never gonna be in a situation where your cleaners are, or where you don't have enough staff to cover or you have to cancel or turn away work, God forbid, like 
ugh, that would suck to have to turn away work. Like I've heard of people having to do this. I've never had to do this because I'm always overstaffed. But God, that would suck. <laughs> I would never want to be in that situation. So don't be in that situation. Always be overstaffed if you can. A lot of people will get to the point where they're like, okay, I've got my staff is totally full and everything's smooth and perfect and I'm just done. No, that's not what needs to happen. You need to always be hiring constantly. Even if you think you're perfectly fine, still be hiring because you never know. People just leave at the drop of a hat in this industry. They just find a better job or they just get burnt out or they sprain their ankle or they get pregnant or they start their own business, you know, whatever. So you never know in this industry. So always be prepared. Always have at least one to two more cleaners than your schedule actually calls for. And you will never be in the situation where you are turning away work. Okay, quality assurance, getting your clients excited. Okay, so we did talk about tracking and measuring quality. We use quality driven, we track it all in there, and then we have the Google, or Google Sheets where we actually put in their quality check scores and all of that. But this is super important. Measure it as you go. Make sure you're rewarding your techs. Make sure that they are being called out for their awesome survey scores. Um, if, if the clients are leaving great feedback and actually mention them by name, like call them out at the team meetings or just send them a text like throughout the day randomly. If they're at a really hard clean, screenshot it and then just send them something like super motivational while they're at this clean because it'll make them feel good about themselves and it'll make them hustle a little bit more. So win-win. Um, but yes, make sure that you're tracking, make sure you're measuring it and rewarding everyone. Make sure you have a solid training program. I cannot tell you how many people I have talked to where this is the number one issue. Like they'll tell me all these problems in their business and then whenever we get down to it, I'm like, all of this starts with the fact that you don't have a training program. That's what it is. The cl if the cleaners are not good, then it just is a trickle down effect. You're going to have crappy cleans. Your clients are going to be mad. They're going to leave your, tr and then all of a sudden it's just like this huge blow up. So this is number one, the most important thing. Make sure your cleaners are being trained properly. Do not, I repeat, do not just throw brand new people on cleans and expect them to be the same as a regular cleaner. This is a huge problem I see. I see people that will book a clean, right? And they'll say, okay, well, it's a 10 labor hour job, right? So they'll have two people there for five hours total for 10 labor hours. They'll say it's a first time deep clean, but they put a regular person on it, regular employee and a trainee, like a new brand new person that's like been there two days. That is not okay. That trainee is not an employee yet. That trainee is a trainee. They don't know what they're doing yet. They might think they know what they're doing. They might say they know what they're doing. You might think they know what they're doing, but I promise you they are not the same as a regular employee that has been through a solid training program. So another reason that you don't want to do this is if you throw people in like that, they immediately assume that you're kind of a mess of a business owner because whenever you hire somebody, they expect to be trained. And whenever you just throw them into something and say, figure it out, and it's pretty much common sense, like I'll check behind you, they're uneasy. They're going to feel uneasy. They're going to be like, I don't really know what I'm doing, and I don't like this feeling of instability. I don't like this feeling of, am I doing it right? Am I doing it wrong? What products am I supposed to use? They want to feel like they know what they're doing. So I promise you putting a training program in place is going to help so, so much. No matter what training program you use, if you use speed cleaning method, that's what we use. If you use... Um, you know, any of the other methods, it doesn't matter what method you use, just have it in black and white and have it like on paper, a training program. So our training program is five days. That's it. Five days. And at the end of five days, they are rock stars and they're on their own on day six. That's how it works. But you need to train them all the exact same way. So that way there's consistency across the board. And if somebody is sick or if somebody calls out, then the other people that come in are going to be cleaning the exact same way. And your clients are not going to know any different. And then all of a sudden, you're not going to have these issues where the client calls and says, well, I just don't understand what happened. It was just horrible today and blah, 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 blah. And then you find out, well, that's because the original cleaner was doing this, this, and this, which technically they weren't supposed to be doing in the first place. They were just overachieving, which is great. However, the new cleaner coming in, they weren't trained that way. So you need to make sure everybody's trained the exact same way. There's no custom stuff. Um, you can just throw any of them in at any time and it'll be the same cleaning. And to ensure that that consistency stays like that, that's why those quality checks are so important. You make sure that you do the quality checks. You make sure that you're uh, checking them on their stuff and then calling them out on it. Believe in your process. This is important. Believe in your process. If you find something that they missed, 
call them out on it and say, okay, so and you can use the sandwich method, which is my favorite. You do a positive, negative, positive. So you call them out and you say, okay, so this was great. You didn't miss a thing here. Now you did accidentally miss the ledge above the bathtub, like that up there. People always miss that. Uh, so make sure to get this. I'm going to go ahead and let you grab that. And then um, I'm going to show you how great you did on this other thing or whatever. Do the sandwich method. method. They won't feel bad about it. And... Um, and it will definitely make them feel like you take your, your process seriously. If they see you taking shortcuts and, and kind of doing it like, you know, lackadaisical or whatever, then they're going to think that. Like, they're going to think that they can just slack and half butt it. You know what I mean? So make sure that you are uh, being solid and consistent in your process. Category five, knowledge, research, and education. So this one is my second favorite category because we all know how much I love to learn. So uh, I found this awesome little knowledge thing right there. And basically, this is a list of some of the books that you need to read. We talked about some of these, the Dale Carnegie one, Profit First. This one is super important. Read that if you want to learn how to set up your business to be profitable from day one and make sure that you your business is consistently profitable. You're never going under. Um, it's a really, really great book. The 12-week year, oops. 12 week year is one of my favorites. That one is all about setting goals. That one is about uh, breaking things down into three month segments versus the whole year. Because if you say, oh, this is my goal for the year, well, that doesn't really happen because you buy the, you know, by month five, you've already forgotten about it. You've given up on it. But if you break everything down into 12 week segments, then you never lose that motivation to get it done. It's like a short enough time span to where you can really see the progress and you can finish it and you can get more accomplished in doing that four times a year than you can in just trying to set it for the whole year. So great book to read. E-Myth, also great. We talked about that one. The Energy Bus is another great one. And then the Four Hour Work Week. So all of these things, make sure that you are reading. And not just these. There's a bunch, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of these that are, you know, super important to, to implement into your business. And just for personal growth and business development, make sure you're reading books. Just make sure you're reading books. Books are so, so important. So your roadmap to success. Hopefully throughout this talk, you have identified as I was talking, the things that you are not doing or the things that you need to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna plan how to do that and then you're gonna solve your, you're gonna solve your problems by doing your plan. And then of course you're gonna use all the Facebook groups to get support and then success, happy dance. So here's what we do. So here's the let's make a roadmap part. This is not going to be very long because this is something you guys are gonna to have to do on your own. I'm just gonna show you the framework of how to do it. So all of those things that you wrote down, you should have a category, uh, five categories and three things under each category. I want you to put a letter A next to all the items that are going to take less than a week to accomplish. Less than a week. Then you're going to put a letter B next to anything that takes less than a month to accomplish. Then you're going to put a letter C next to anything that is ongoing or takes longer than a month. Okay? So 15 things, A, B, C, put them down, A, B, C, A, B, C, all the way across. Just, just put them next to those items so that you have an idea of what we're working with here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to have basically, um, you're going to have it broken down <clears throat> to where you take all of your C's and you're going to schedule that first. So you're going to take things that take the longest, you're going to schedule first. Okay, so now that you guys have gone through and you've put your A's, your B's, and your C's right next to all of your action items, I'm going to give you an example of how I set up a roadmap for this specific vision. So you can see how I do it, and then that way you guys can do the same thing. So for this example, the vision is to become a household name, right? The goal is to increase visibility and reputation, and then I broke it down into three phases, networking events and groups, becoming a networking legend, and building your reputation. Okay, so this is month one. Now I have this in all three months. So this is kind of the 12 week year thing that I talked about earlier, uh, breaking it down like that so that you can actually accomplish it. So you have to reverse engineer your goals. So you went through and you, you put a C next to all the ones that are ongoing or that take longer than a month. So you're gonna start with those. For those three or those however many you have, those things, 
you're going to fill in these blanks with those things first and you need to reverse engineer them and decide how many uh, action items and how many steps it's going to take to actually accomplish that goal so just work backwards so this shows you a breakdown here so week one the the theme I just have themes now you don't have to get this fancy but week one the theme is research events week two join Facebook networking groups week three join meetup groups week four put schedule together so each day so this is like week one day one two three four five so this is Monday through Friday of each week okay Google networking events so remember each of these boxes is just one day it's just one action that you do per day none of this is overwhelming so you should be able to accomplish all of this stuff without actually stressing out because none of these things take very long so googling networking events calling five to ten entrepreneur friends to ask if um, if they know of any good networking events emailing five to ten contacts it's you know these are just things that you should have lists of people that you know you know in your circles and stuff contacting oops contacting small business association completing a list of desired events so by the end of this first week you should have a list of all of the events that you know about that you can actually you know uh, you know uh, want to put on your schedule and go to and actually get to know everybody week two is the Facebook week so search the local Facebook groups and join them post on at least three comments in the groups that's something you're gonna do every day for three days and then compile a list of events from the groups so all of these things it's by the end of this you're going to have a huge list so like week three you're going to start doing the meetup stuff and figuring out what groups are in there and then week four, that's whenever you're going to go through all of this stuff and plan out the next two months of your networking schedule. Manage, manage your schedule and commit it, commit to calendar to attend. So actually physically putting it on your calendar. Plan out your clothing and keep the location in mind. Invite at least two friends to each event. And then prepare take-alongs and get excited. So preparing like, you know, your brochures or like little goodie bags or whatever you want to like hand out at these types of things. And then month two, this is whenever you're going to learn. Um, you're going to read that book I told you about how to win friends and influence people so this is like breaking it down you're gonna read a book and then week two you're gonna practice and then week three you're gonna uh, you're gonna learn your elevator pitch and you're gonna completely just nail that by the end of it and then week four Facebook takeover join all the local mom groups do the keyword searches all of this stuff so none of these things are difficult to do and none of them take take very long so it's like one thing at a time um, and by the end of it you're going to have a huge huge advantage um, in this category you're gonna have everything built out you're gonna have your calendar set up you're gonna have your networking events scheduled you're gonna have your clothes picked out you're gonna have all these groups um, infiltrated and all of this stuff so it's super easy to do all of this now it might not be easy for you to break it down like this but it's kind of a skill that you have to learn and it's something that you can learn so you can learn how to reverse engineer everything and just think from the biggest down to the smallest and so you're going to take your goals that you have right now those 15 things you start with the things with the C on it and then you're going to go to the B's and then you're going to go to the A's the A's are the things that you said are going to take less than a week so get your get your little roadmap here together and I'm going to actually uh, send you guys a blank one of these so that you guys can actually just like fill in the blanks and, and make it yourself and just start just start filling in the blanks just start putting in those action items that you need to take and put them in as often as you need to to make sure that these things get done and so that your goals get done okay so once you have your roadmap make sure you're committing to doing it and find somebody to hold your butt accountable that is the number one issue I find is that people are not being held accountable so they just forget about it or they just don't do it or they just get lazy or they just give up or you know what I'm saying so find an accountability buddy go in the groups and find somebody just say hey I need an accountability buddy and somebody will say me too and then you guys can hold each other accountable hopefully you can find somebody in your time zone and then you guys can actually like communicate once a week call each other have like a set time that you call each other every week and hold each other accountable or just communicate through Facebook Messenger or whatever but there's there's an endless amount of people that will be willing to help you with this okay so I hope you guys enjoyed that extremely long presentation I apologize that I talk a lot but hopefully it was full of great content and for those of you that already knew some of it hopefully you learned something new for those of you that are just at the beginning of starting your maid service I'm sure you're probably super overwhelmed with all of it so just take it one step at a time you're gonna make a roadmap full of all of the stuff that you learned and let us know if you need help with anything um, 
before I go, it is finally time for me to announce the big, exciting, epic announcement that I teased my group. And um, so I have decided that I have finally figured out what Rescue My Maid Service is going to do. Obviously, we have some really cool like offerings. We have our little mini marketing package with the social media and the MailChimp stuff. You know, we can do websites. We've done estimator apps. We do those, um, you know, just very simple, like techie stuff. Um, but I was in Minnesota on a rescue mission, and it was like, the angel of the Lord Gabriel like came down to me and I finally figured out what the purpose of all of this was and it clicked and I'm so, so excited to share with you what I'm doing. So I being the millennial that I am, of course, I'm always trying to innovate and I'm always trying to find cool new things to do in our business and cool new things in our industry that haven't been done before. So what I decided is that I am going to be the creator, drum roll please, of the very first maid service owner subscription box. And the crowd goes wild. Okay, for those of you that have no idea what I'm talking about, let me explain. <laughs> so there are subscription boxes for everything. There's subscription boxes for dog treats, it's called Bark Box. There's ones for uh, food, like Blue Apron. There's ones for clothing, like Stitch Fix. I have one for my hair color because it's not just actually this beautiful. There's actually like white hair underneath all of this because y'all stress me out. So I got to keep up with my Madison Reed subscription box every six weeks and dye my hair. <laughs> but there's really boxes for everything. And it's such a new like millennial kind of concept thing or whatever. But it is such a cool like wave that's happened where people sign up for these subscription boxes and then every month you get this awesome surprise in the mail full of fun stuff. And some of them are like, you know, replenishing, like obviously like my hair color or like Dollar Shave Club, like that stuff is just kind of like replenishing the ones that you had. But then there's super fun ones where they're kind of like surprise boxes, right? So that is where I'm going with it. So basically when I was in Minnesota, Michelle showed me a subscription box that she belongs to um, that was specifically curated for female entrepreneurs. Now, not necessarily maid service owners, just entrepreneurs in any industry, right? So very broad, just kind of like a business kind of, uh, you know, hustle kind of a go, you go girl motivation kind of a thing. So that really led to everything just like click, 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 click. And I realized how much I would love to offer a maid service owner subscription box. So basically, Every month, you will get a sparkly box. Well, maybe not sparkly. I'm working on the box design now. But you will get a box, and it will have a book inside of it, a physical book. Remember those? And it will have a book inside of it that is something like what we've talked about, like all of these awesome business books out there, something that is going to motivate you to help you with some area in your business, but it's going to have an awesome book in it. It's which of course everybody will read and then we'll talk about. So it's kind of like a book club kind of a thing every month. And then it's going to have an array of things from office supplies to motivate you in your office, just new fun office supplies that are really cool and girly and cute. Um, or maybe not girly, but like humorous or whatever. Um, it will have some sort of cleaning product or tool that you can try, like new things that I have come across, things that people have shown me, things that people have like made that they, you know, manufacture that's kind of like homegrown kind of stuff. Um, it will have some sort of something that will help you with like stress relief. So like, you know, just something to help you with stress relief. Okay, we'll just leave it at that. It will have something techy, so some sort of tech gadgety thing in it. Um, and basically just a box full of motivation and a box full of something to do with growing your business. And you will also have a card, there'll be a, a glossy, pretty glossy postcard in it that's gonna have a code for your training for the month. So every month you'll be able to log on with your code and you will have like a one to two hour training session about whatever topic that month is about. Um, you know, or if there's a guest speaker, then they will talk. Um, but basically it's gonna be like a private exclusive training for something in your business. So it's going to be super exciting and I have already gotten through a bunch of the obstacles that I had to uh, come across to make this happen. Luckily, I have a huge office with a huge warehouse in the back, so that just was 
I don't even know. It's just like magic. Like, oh my gosh, that just happened. And it's just been sitting back there empty. And now I have a purpose for it. I'm right across from the post office. I have a whole staff that's like ready to help me, you know, fulfill the orders and everything. And every month I will get to help motivate everybody and I'll get to pick a new theme for the month. And it's going to be exciting and fun and it's going to be exclusive. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait for this. I think it's going to be so much fun. If you guys have subscription boxes for anything else, I mean, you spend however much on those, like why would you not do it for your business, which is like the most important thing. Every month we are gonna be focused on growing and motivating you and holding you accountable and everything. So this is my dream, this is what's happening. I've already almost completed the uh, box contents of the first box, I've almost got it completed. Um, so the details. It's going to launch in September, okay? So today's July 31st, so it's going to launch in September. I have a little more of pre-launch stuff to do. Um, if you are interested in being one of the first, I am only allowing 50 boxes for the first month. I have enough to do 50 boxes that I have uh, you know, gotten all the stuff for and I've getting everything ready for. I'm not doing more than that for the first month. I'm not gonna be stupid about it. I'm not going to just be like, oh, everybody, all thousands of you can join. And then all of a sudden I'm like, oh my God, I can't do this. No, not happening. I am like a master organizer and planner and I make sure everything I do is perfect. So that being said, I am only allowing 50 people for the first month. Now after the first month, I will allow people to join you know, slowly from there. But if you want to be one of the first, of the awesome new Maid Service Center subscription box, which by the way is, ooh, do I wanna tell you what the name of it is yet? I think I'm gonna wait. I'm gonna surprise you guys with, because I already have the logo and the name and everything, it's really, really cool. So I will wait to show you that. But, um, but anyways, if you wanna be part of the first launch period. It's going to be, uh, you'll be able to put your email in and you can get the first inside scoop of everything that's going on and everything. If you go to rescuemymaidservice.com, uh, you'll see on there, uh, it'll say subscribe to our, oh, you'll probably see it on there, actually. You'll probably see the name of it. So yeah, you will. <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you, it's called Monthly Maidivation, M-A-I-D-I-V-A-T-I-O-N. So monthly motivation. So that's the name of it. And it'll be a monthly dose of motivation for the stressed out maid service owner. So that's what we're doing. And just sign up to be uh, in the loop. And then you'll be able to be one of the first people to register for the 50. And once it hits 50, it will end. It's not, I'm not going to let anybody else in after the first 50. Um, so then after that, then for the next month, you'll just kind of be on a wait list for the next month and, and you'll be able to see what's going on after that. So that's the exciting news. I hope that you guys are as jazzed about it as I am. I think it's going to be so much fun and I'll be able to like introduce you to all kinds of fancy speakers and all kinds of products and books and oh my gosh, we're just going to learn together and grow together and just yay. So thank you guys so much for joining this talk, for sticking with me for so long. I am so sorry I'm so long-winded, uh, but I am just so excited to have had you here and to see you in the groups. And if you need anything at all, please don't hesitate to reach out. I'm always available. I work way too much. <laughs> so I love answering questions and helping people. So just jump in, chat. You can email me at Courtney at ZenMade.com or Courtney at RescueMyMaidService.com. Either one, I have two personalities. So either of those, I will answer. Uh, may not be right away because I do get bombarded with emails quite a bit. So I kind of batch them, you know, once a week to respond. So. Uh, that's how I stay organized, which you should do that too. That's a tip. So uh, yeah, that's about it. Thank you so much. I hope you guys have an awesome rest of your Maid, Ser Maid Service Summit experience. Go listen to all the other talks. Definitely listen to Landon Sanford. He is awesome. Not just because I love him, <laughs> but definitely listen to him and listen to uh, Angela Brown and, and Martha Woodward and Ma Maria Dorian and Amar, everybody. There's just so many great talks on here. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this and I hope that you are just as excited as I am about growing your businesses together.